Hi, I'm Spencer. Welcome back to Expat Jack. Today I'm taking you through the down and dirty on how to record drums in a less than ideal room. Stay tuned. You may have noticed I'm sitting where my desk used to be. As I get closer to moving, I'm having to break down my gear, start packing it up, and I still have projects to do in the meantime. I need to record more backing tracks for my own videos that I'm creating, and I have a project to do with uh, my buddy Laurent that requires drums to be recorded as well. I want to pack up drums because they take up a lot of room, but before I do that, I need to lay down some tracks. All the music on any of my videos that you hear in the background is all written, recorded, mixed, mastered, all of it's done by me. And I don't program anything. I don't like to program anything. So it's all recorded acoustically, live, with real instruments, with microphones, uh, my interface, which is a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20, and then it goes into my Mac with Pro Tools. I can still record guitar later. I can record bass later, but I really want to get these drums packed up and ready to move because they take up a lot of space. I also have a lot of other things coming up that I need to do. I have my ATP CTP class next week, and I also have to do the FAA test for the ATP, and after that I got to do the flight test for the ATP to earn it. So lots of stuff I'm focused on besides moving and besides creating more content. So I want to get this knocked out and pack these things up. Now before I take you through some basics on microphone placement, and we start recording just to see how it sounds, do a test track to make sure everything sounds good. Got to start with research. Like anything, you know, if you start just trying to do it yourself, you can, you can absolutely make it work, but it'll take you a lot of time to figure things out. Why not learn from people who've already done it and learn from people who do it for a living? So I highly recommend a couple of books by a professional mixer, uh, producer, a guy named Mixer Man, that's his alias, and one of them in particular for miking things and just doing everything yourself as a musician so you don't have to rely on other people so you don't have to pay for studio time you know it'll save you a lot of money and a lot of headache trying to figure it out for yourself mixer man's zen and the art of series is fantastic he has zen and the art of recording zen and the art of mixing and zen and the art of producing now all three of these books are much more in-depth on those topics and if you like technical data and you like somebody explaining how to go through it, well that's not what these books are. Everything with Mixer Man is listening, using your ears, and those basic principles to build a solid foundation of doing these skills. He includes a little bit of technical data of course, but um, again he is much more focused on actually listening than looking at waveforms and things like that. Now the one I recommend the most is this one. Mixer Man's Studio Field Manual Musician's Survival Guide to a Killer Record. This gives you everything as a musician trying to do it yourself. Playing the instruments, recording them, mixing them, mastering them. He talks about compression, about EQ, reverbs, I mean you name it he goes through it. This book is fantastic and this has been a a lifesaver and made a world of difference in my ability to record myself and make all these great backing tracks for all the videos I've been creating that you know you've been you've been hearing in the background. Now before we get to playing what I'll do is I'll grab my GoPro camera, get up and take it around the drum set, show you where each mic is, give you a little bit of insight into why it's placed there. Again, this is not, you know, we're in a multi-million dollar studio with a perfect room, perfect mics, perfect kit. It's going to sound great pretty much no matter what, as long as you don't have a crappy drummer. This is, can I make it work? I'm trying to make this work. So nobody's watching my videos sitting there, watching me snowboard, not paying attention to that, listening to the snare sound, 
in the backing track. No one's saying, oh man, he really should have aimed his snare more at the center to get more of the attack and less of the ring from the snare drum. No, nobody's doing that. Can I just lay down some drums that sound decent, that work, that I can put a bass guitar over, some other guitars on top of, maybe an acoustic, probably electric, uh, so I don't have to pay other people to do it. That's the biggest thing here. I like doing things myself, so that's what this is all about. And this room is less than ideal. It's a basement. It's got glass all over the place and a low ceiling, eight feet. But we have a few tools that'll help with that. If you can't get some of the tools that I have, I can give you a few recommendations that'll really help make a difference to make your drums sound good, even recorded in a space that is not meant for it. So let's start with the bass drum. Right here I have an Audix D6 mic. It's on a stand. I have a porthole in the bass drum head and the mic is centered on the porthole, aimed at the batter head on the other side. You know, barely just inside that that porthole there. It's going to capture the attack. It's going to get some of the low end wolf out of it. It's going to be more than good enough to get a workable bass drum sound. Now we have the tom. Here's the high tom. I have my Audix D2 mic aimed at the batter head. It's about I'll say an inch off the drum head, not aimed directly at the center where I'm going to be striking it, but just slightly off that to pick up some of the resonant sound of the tom. From here, we'll go over to the hi-hat. I have an Audix F15 pencil style condenser mic aimed at the hi-hat. It's not right at the edge, not right in the center, but kind of between the two. If you look right down from the top, you can see that yeah, it's kind of in the center. Let me pull that out just a little bit more. That's better. That's where I like it. I don't have anything on this snare drum. I always like having a side snare drum uh, just as an effect and the overheads will pick this up. But if we jump over to my snare mic, you can see it's right over the edge of the hoop there, about an inch off the drum head aimed at the center where I'll be striking it to get the best sound as I can with that Audix i5. Over there on the other side you can see my two floor tom mics. I have a D2 on the 14 inch head and a D4 on the 16 inch floor tom. They're aimed in the same general vicinity as the upper tom was, the high tom. Now we go up to my overheads. You can see they're AKG P420s. It's a match pair of basic condenser mics. Not super expensive, but more than workable. They're about the same height and over each side of the drum kit to give the stereo field of sound when you're listening back. And what you might have noticed is above it, I have a sound cloud. Now this is to make sure that the audio doesn't reflect off the ceiling, especially from the snare and the higher end and directly come right back into the microphones. This was relatively inexpensive um, but if you're looking for a less professional option something that works is egg crate you can absolutely drape a huge sheet of egg crate over your overheads and just kind of tape it to the ceiling or something and that'll give you a a similar effect to make sure you don't have any uh, audio reflecting off the ceiling right back into the mics making your recording unusable so just a, a very quick trick there. Again, this room isn't great for recording, but we're going to take a shot at it and see how it sounds. Now that we've gone over mic placement, let's do a test recording, make sure everything sounds okay, make sure I can get a usable track out of these drums, lay all my drum tracks down, pack up my drums, put them away, and not worry about them again until I get to Romania. Even though I have some great AKG studio headphones. Um, these are semi-open back headphones, so there is audio that escapes, and I'm trying to record while I'm listening to a click track. I don't want that sound, that, that sound of the click that's just annoying, bleeding out of my headphones and being able to be picked up by any of these microphones. So instead of using these, which I use for, for playback to make sure it sounds good when I'm not using my studio monitors, I will use some basic Bose in-ears, and this is just so I can hear the click track. Um, they're noise canceling, so the click track shouldn't escape, and it won't get picked up by any of the microphones.
one of the things to keep in mind before I start playing is I'm going to want to hit everything. Um, even my unmic snare, my mic snare, the toms, the cymbals in different ways, riding on the hi-hat open and closed, um, just to get an idea of if it's going to work for everything or not. So this is the fun part and I hope it sounds good. So, let's check out the audio and see how that sounds. So what you guys heard before was pretty much raw, just slightly mixed. I'm going ahead and enabling some EQs and compression that I set up, along with just a little bit of reverb on the drum bus so we can compare. Let's take a listen. Sounds better to me. Now this is not a lot of effort, not a lot of time put into it. I would call this a usable drum sound, wouldn't you? Now that we know our audio is more than usable and actually sounds pretty decent for the situation we are in recording in a less than ideal room, uh, it's time for me to actually go create some backing tracks. So if you liked this video, please press like. I hope you learned something. If you want more content like it, please press subscribe. And don't hesitate, reach out, leave me a comment, or hit me up on my Facebook page, Expat Jack. And I'm more than happy to work with you on any project you have and answer any questions about creating decent sounding backing tracks. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.